Welcome and thanks so much for being here. I'm Tamsin Fidel. Well, over the past year, Broadway stars have had to pivot, find new ways to perform and reinvent the way fans were entertained, which meant some truly impressive digital theatrical productions like Take Me to the World, a Sondheim 90th birthday celebration. The concert featured performances from tons of A-list superstars like Meryl Streep, Lin-Manuel Miranda, and much more. And now, a huge accolade for the show. Paul Wontorek is here with all the details for us. Hi, Paul. Tamsin, Take Me to the World was unlike anything I've ever been a part of, giving millions of theater fans a front row seat to a Sondheim birthday bash. And I'm thrilled to say it was just honored with the Drama League Award for Outstanding Digital Concert Production. I recently caught up with the show's host and co-producer, Raul Esparza. Raul, good to see you. Hi, Paul. How does it feel to be sitting in Times Square and as the world is starting to emerge from a pandemic? Freaking deranged. I'm frightened. <laughs> Are you? It's weird. Like, I feel like we all kind of have different <laughs> have, <I> social... Have... <laughs> Do you find you have, like, social anxiety? Not social anxiety, social awkwardness. A bunch of us uh, made the, the Waves in Quarantine project yeah. and none of us had met in the course of the year. So last Friday we went to the Empire Hotel to have drinks. And it was like we'd never, we were new. It was our first day on Earth. I think everybody's gonna go through that this year. And what's safe and what isn't. I feel like New York is finally stuttering back to life. Yeah. Um, but there was always a little bit more life here even than everywhere else I had visited. Do you feel like you're coming out of all of this with any sort of different attitude or renewed energy or? I'll tell you one of the things that I think. You know, after we made Take Me to the World, I feel like, I don't feel like asking for permission for stuff anymore. So maybe that's a little arrogant, but it's definitely, there has been a sense over the course of the year of like, you know what? If we can, as they say in Rocky Horror, dream it, be it. And then bang, crash, the lightning flash. Oh, well, that's another story, never mind. Anyway, at last the big day came. I made my claim. Oh, don't take away the baby. They shrieked and screeched, but I did. And I hit her where she'll never be reached. You and I spent a lot of time talking, and I was so honored that you reached out to me, and we made this concert. This idea that we, we couldn't let Stephen Sondheim's 90th birthday pass yeah. because it's, we're in a pandemic. We have to figure something out. Yeah, it seemed imperative that we celebrate Steve's 90th. Steve Sondheim, to me, is our kind of our greatest, our greatest musical theater artist, certainly at the second half of the 20th century, but he comes from that, that world that preceded him. He learned from the best and then built on that, and there's a new world now that builds on him. And it's a long line of continuity. He, he represents that for me. I feel, in retrospect, like it was several weeks of the most extraordinary, like, pure past album joy, blowing up with gratitude experience that I have had in a long time. When you talk about a Broadway community, man, people showed up. You do realize that you're a fantastic actor and you've done a lot of amazing things, but this will always now also be attached to you. I'm amazed by that. Aren't you the sense of what something that we dreamt up at home could have had any kind of international impact? Which is the other thing that I think is extraordinary about the pandemic. Broadway and theater have a really bad relationship to technology, and I think that um, maybe we can come out the other side of this not so scared of technology and what it might lead us to somehow. Clearly there were audiences all over the world for Steve's music, and I don't think we knew that. I think that might be a good thing for us to keep in mind about how the technology can help reach audiences that can't make it to New York. But not with trumpets or lightning flashes or shining armor. He may be daring, he may be dashing, or maybe he's a farmer. I know that after Take Me to the World happened, you then got to actually hear what Mr. Sondheim thought of it. What was it like talking to him about it and what did that mean to you? Oh man, uh, yeah. He called the next day and was grateful and thankful and also just like uproariously entertained by the stories of putting it together. I wept for joy. I wept for joy that the thing that we set out to do, which was wish him a happy birthday, in fact happened. And here's to the girls who just watch. Aren't they the best? When they get depressed, it's a bottle of scotch plus a little jest. Can you say 
anything about creating The Ladies Who Lunch? Yeah, I mean, that was surreal. They were so game and so willing to play with it. I asked Meryl to do it. She said yes, and she was going to do a song from Into the Woods that had been cut. And then she was like, it's kind of dour, but whatever. Um, then Christine called and was like, yeah, but uh, absolutely. She told me the story about this dinner that she had with Steve and uh, thought it would be fun to try to recreate that dinner. And I was like, sure, how would we do it? She's like, what if we did Ladies Who Lunch? She said that we'll get, you know, Audra to join us and we'll just do this thing. I think they thought it was just this hoot. Like, oh, it'll be fun and Steve will see it. And then when the press hit and it suddenly was like this global thing, I got this text message going, oh boy, honey, that's a lot of attention. <laughs> and so suddenly it went from like, this will be fun to what the hell have we done? So Audra calls me and she's like, oh, what is this exactly? What are we doing? Okay, wait a minute. And then Christine comes in and goes, so we know that we've, we're gonna kill our careers, but I think we've had, we're okay, right? And then Meryl was like, I've had a good run, I think. If this is a total fiasco, I guess I'm okay with that. You also got to return to Law & Order, which that was sort of a surprise, right? Yeah, that was really cool, actually. There was a, a, Warren Light had come back to the show, and Warren had been the one who wrote the role for me, and it was great to have him back, and he wanted to do something where Barba sort of came out from the wilderness, and that was cool. He wrote a really good script. It was really fun to be back on set with those guys. It's like visiting family.